Right now in Hoosier News Source, aftermath of the California wildfires, how it's impacted one IU student. And with finals week right around the corner, find out about how IU students are coping with stress. And I have when the snow chances are highest this week, as well as when the cold temperatures will be upon us. Who's your news source starts now. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Who's Your News Source. I'm Brianna Higgins. And I'm Meg O'Toole. And now, Zoe Mintz joins us live in studio with this week's local weather. Zoe? Thanks, Brianna, and happy December. But with the beginning of December comes chilly temperatures and snow chances, which is exactly what we are going to see this Thursday, with the cold front extending from Oklahoma all the way up through Indiana in our area. In Oklahoma, it looks like we're going to get a little bit of rain-snow mix, but as it goes up into the northern colder temperatures, we're definitely going to get some snow in our area. And the uh, temperatures will go down throughout the day as the cold front goes down, or as the cold front pushes through our area. Uh, temperatures in the morning around 38 degrees, and as it comes and pushes through, it will bring down temperatures to around 30 degrees and the chances of snow will go down at around 6 p.m. And as the cold front moves east, a high pressure system will take over its place over our area, bringing with it drier conditions for the basketball game this weekend on Saturday against the Louisville Cardinals. Um, we could see at around noon, there is a slight chance of a quick pop up rain or snow shower, but nothing severe will be happening on Saturday. It looks like it will be mostly clear, a couple uh, clouds in the sky. But the main thing to be careful for this Saturday is the wind chill. It seems like it's only six, uh, six miles an hour, but it's coming from the north, bringing with it the very chilly northern Arctic air and making sure that we are going to get a chilly weekend. And as most of us would expect, we are beginning to see the start of true December weather beginning this week um, on Wednesday 34 degrees Thursday you could see where the low front or the cold front pushes through our area bringing with it the chance of snow and chillier temperatures as we continue the week uh, Friday 33 degrees Saturday there is a chance of snow like I said but it will be mostly sunny with a few clouds throughout the day Sunday and Monday again pretty mild 36 38 degrees Tuesday, it looks like there is the possibility of a little warm up next week, but we don't want to get too excited for anything because we are looking at definitely some chillier and drier conditions than we normally see at this time in December. But it seems like after Thursday, we shouldn't be any seeing any more snow for a while. So make sure to dress up for the weather and bundle up, but definitely go out and soak in some sunshine this weekend if you can. Brianna, Meg, back to you. If you thought Bird and Lime scooters were leaving the city anytime soon, you are sadly mistaken. Both companies signed an agreement with the City of Bloomington that mandates them to pay $10,000 annually to keep the scooters. The contract also states an additional $0.10 cents per ride will be collected monthly and the companies are responsible for injury, damage, or bad parking of the scooters, resulting in $50 fine. It's a big day for burger and milkshake lovers. Five Guys opened its doors today at 11 a.m. Located at 425 East Kirkwood Avenue, the popular burger joint will be Bloomington's second location. They were originally supposed to open in November, but franchisor Paul Gillard said they wanted to wait until students returned home from Thanksgiving break. To find out more about their hours and what's on the menu, you can visit them in-store today. Now, with the update on the IU student that lost so much in the recent California wildfires, IUSTV reporter Andrew Lamparski joins us in studio. Last month, wildfires tore through California, killing over 90 people. The fires destroyed nearly 20,000 homes and businesses. One of those homes belonged to an IU student and her family. Senior Bella Heron graciously shared her story with us. On Thursday, November 8th, the Woolsey and Camp wildfires broke out in the suburbs of Los Angeles and Sacramento. The next day, an IU senior and native of Malibu, Bella Heron, received some devastating news. The Woolsey fire had destroyed her family's home. Well, that day I like sat in bed and just like watched the news on my computer the whole time. And I was like nervous because it was in my area. And so I was also in contact with my brother who lives like more in town. And he's the one. I like called him because he was like, did you hear? And then he told me. Heron's uncle, a firefighter, shared a video with her showing what remained of her neighborhood. The video shows Heron Street covered with rubble and ashes where her and her neighbor's home stood just a month ago. I was just trying to like mentally prepare myself as best as I could for like seeing it in person and it was just like 
It looked like it was like a movie set or like a war, like it didn't look even recognizable. But now Heron says it's time to rebuild. While the process could take until the end of next year to complete, her family is making the most of their temporary housing. Heron's mother even decorated their rental home for Christmas, proving that Malibu's holiday spirit is still alive and well. At the end of the day, like it was just like us, you know what I mean, and celebrating Christmas, like even if it's not gifts, just being together. Her family's Christmas will certainly be different from last year, but Heron is happy everyone in her family is safe this holiday season. Heron's home was just one of nearly 1,500 homes destroyed in Los Angeles County. You can donate to the California Community Foundation's Wildfire Relief Fund by visiting www.calfund.org. The IU Ballet Theater Program wrapped up their production of The Nutcracker this week. After months of hard work and dedication, the dancers decided to dedicate the show to one of their very own, Rafaela Stroik. Stroik, a graduate of the IU Theater Program, was found dead in a rural lake in Missouri on November 14, 2018. In her obituary, Stroik's death is described as an accident. Stroik's friends and former classmates say Stroik epitomizes what a ballerina is. She handled herself with grace and elegance, not just on stage, but in all aspects of life. Putting every ounce of emotion you have and every feeling you have towards what just happened into your dancing was the best possible thing we could have asked for. That sense of unity, that sense of no matter what, you know, we're, we're doing this for <coughs> ourselves and for her was incredible. From all of us here at IUS TV, we would like to offer our condolences to Rafaela's friends and family. This week marks the start of dead week for IU students, but the week is far from dead. Students spend majority of the week preparing for the stressful week to follow, final exam week. With finals around the corner, students are beginning to panic in preparation for their exams. Working hard for a semester only goes so far because for some, final exams can make or break their grades. I'm standing outside IU's most popular study location, Except Wells Library, so to get a first-hand report on how students are feeling during final season. Students are cramming their curriculum, pulling all-nighters, and strategically planning their study times. Even so, the results of their exams and hard work may not always follow. For financial management, I'll probably say three hours alone on that, and then probably, I would say a total about ten hours, probably nine hours. Not only do students get stressed with the amount of studying they have to do, but they also get stressed trying to incorporate excessive studying into their already busy schedules. I have to combine that with clubs and um, learning new material in those classes and just all extracurricular activities, so it's hard to like balance everything. Although students tend to get stressed and lack mental health during finals, it is important to remember that help is available. I know that you know talking to someone, especially a trained professional, can help um, alleviate a lot of that stress and pressure. So just being able to release that in the healthy way can um, be helpful for students. Contact the IU Health Center for help with mental health during finals week. For Hoosiers News Source, I am Lexi Venetti. And if you or someone you know is struggling with mental health and managing stress, contact the IU Health Center or visit their website for more information at www.healthcenter.indiana.edu. Coming up, we tell you how the Hoosiers did in sports this week. Plus, what's going on around the world with our global report. These stories and more coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at stories people are talking about around the world. 
International reporters Lara Misanyan and Carly Van Cleve join us in studio with the Global Report. Thanks, you two. Riots, torched cars, and burned buildings have taken the streets of France over the past three weeks. Over 400 protesters, known as the Yellow Vests, are under arrest in Paris. The people are marching against the rising fuel prices and eco taxes on polluting vehicles. Ce qui s'est passé aujourd'hui à Paris. What happened today in Paris has nothing to do with the peaceful expression of a perfectly legitimate anger. The people who instigators of this uh, violence don't want any change. Any President Emmanuel Macron visits the area to survey the damage and look for possible solutions to the matter. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke on Sunday. This comes after police say they have enough evidence to indict him on charges of fraud, bribery and breach of trust. The case known as Case 4000 is the third and one of the largest facing the Israeli leader and his inner circle. The Prime Minister said he was not surprised by the recommendations or the timing. You may remember when 43 students went missing in Mexico in 2014. Yesterday, the Mexican president signed a commission to investigate their disappearance. The family members of the 43 missing students gathered for the event holding signs of their loved ones. The president says the commission aims to clarify the facts of the case and find justice for these students. This was one of the first official decrees of Lopez Obrador as the new president of Mexico. Finally tonight, Qatar State Oil Company announced Monday that the country is leaving the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC. They've been members for nearly 60 years and leave to focus on natural gas production. The gas-rich Gulf state is one of OPEC's oldest members and will leave on January 1st. Comes amid an 18-month diplomatic and economic embargo of Qatar by its Arab neighbors. Qatar responded to those measures by boosting gas production, which is the lifeline of its economy. Despite Qatar's long tenure at OPEC, it was only a marginal player in terms of oil production. That's all for the Global Report today. Thanks for watching. I'm Marmy Sanyan. And I'm Carly Van Cleve. Back to you, Brianna and Meg. It was a busy weekend for sports teams as some of them wrapped up their season. Our sports reporter, Joe Cantor, joins us live in studio to give us the recap. Thanks, Meg. Win. Win, 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 win. That's all the Indiana men's soccer team does. The team is 20 and 2 and 1. Winners of 12 straight games, and they hosted Notre Dame in the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament. The Elite Eight, if you will. And it took till the 64th minute when this one, Andrew Gutman, taps to Trevor Schwartz, who crossed it into the box and found the head of Austin Poncho. And the celebration is on in Bloomington. Todd Yeagley's Hoosiers are on to the semifinals of the College Cup. The Indiana men's basketball team opened up conference play down to the wire with a win over Northwestern. The Hoosiers were putting the moves on the Purple Wildcats in this one. The up and under from Al Durham, the pump fake from Jawan Morgan, and a little slam jam bam from Romeo Lankford. Then, Jerron Davis with the post move spin cycle. Romeo was the constant in this one, however. Every time the Cats took the lead, Lankford was there to bring it back. Oh, beholdeth, he at the window, bang, the Hoosiers win this one. 68 to 66. What a start to conference play. Now the undefeated Indiana women's basketball team headed out to Westwood, California to take on traditional power, the Bruins of UCLA. Allie Patberg and Jalen Penn were the big scorers for IU in this contest. They had to withstand an early onslaught of Bruins scoring from their tough guards. The big shot late was hit by Jalen Penn. The pen is mightier than the sword as she deals a devastating blow. Bruins, that's your game. Winners, 67-65. IU wins. That's all we have for sports this week. For more campus and local news, visit our website at iustv.com. Guys, how about the men's soccer team? Do you think they have what it takes to win it all? I think they do. I think it's going to be a really great game. Yeah, they've got a crazy strong team this year. And going out to California, that'd be nice. Yeah, I was in the student section for the game. It was so much fun. Yeah, the atmosphere was electric. Like, the whole place just went crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joe. <laughs> And that's all that we have for you this week. For more campus and local news, visit our website at iustv.com. And like us on social media. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at IUSTV News. From all of us here at IUSTV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next semester.